And one way to do that is something that we call local search. Now, the greedy algorithm, the key principle is that you start with nothing and step by step you construct a solution. So at the end of the greedy steps, at first you have zero, right? So you add one city, two cities, three cities, and so on. You get to the n cities, and you know that the uh, greedy algorithm has completed. So you get a solution. Now, that solution that you get may not be the best one you can get. So one way to see whether or not you can improve upon the solution is to do what we call local search. Now, the idea of local search is essentially the thinking that you start with a complete solution and then you try to tweak it. So you try to tweak it in a systematic way, in such a way that you expect that the tweak, even the small tweak, will bring you to the next solution that might be better than the current one. And essentially the pseudocode uh, is simple. So you start with a complete solution, which could be something arbitrary, like random, or you could get it from an existing algorithm, like the greedy. It could be greedy one, greedy two. And then we're going to go through iterations to make small modifications to see whether or not we can improve it. So there are pros and cons to doing this. So the pro is that, well, at some level, you actually can control what is going to be the number of iterations that you can do to try to improve it. So for example, if you, when you use a greedy algorithm, you cannot stop halfway. If you stop in the middle, you don't get a complete tour, right? So it's not a valid solution. But uh, for the local search, since you start with a complete solution, each time you try to change it to see whether you get a better one. So which means that as you keep changing it, at any point of time, if you want to stop, you just stop. You already have a solution. And that is probably the best that you have so far. Now, uh, the disadvantage is that it is very sensitive to the starting points. Uh, because if your starting point uh, happens to be a bad starting point, it might take you many, many, many iterations to eventually go to a good enough solution. So one thing that uh, people normally do is to try to start from greedy, because greedy generally gives them a baseline. Uh, and then from greedy, you try to improve it by doing local search. Now, what do we actually mean by doing local search? Now, we're going to look at an example. So here, we are going to define a term that is called neighborhood, and the idea of neighborhood is the alternate solutions. So you start from a starting solution, and then you define neighborhood, which means that these are the alternatives to the existing solution that you would like to examine. And one way to define the neighborhood is through what we call the age exchange. So this is a specific algorithm that is called k-opt. Now in particular, the two opt deals with identifying two ages that you try to remove, and then you try to restore the tool, the tour by reconnecting the ages. So for example, let's say you have an existing solution that looks like this. Uh, you identify the two dotted lines there. These are the two existing ages. Now if you remove them, you can reconnect them by swapping the partners to the ages so that they get reconnected in a different way. And this reconnected uh, in a different way kind of solution might actually be better than the previous one. Now, it may be better, it may be worse. But the idea is that you only move to the new solution only if it is better. If it is not better, then why make the move, right? So that is the idea. Now, if you were to keep doing this for many, many, many iterations, you might eventually get to an optimal answer. But even so, it's not guaranteed. Because depending on the complexity of the problem, you might still, in the end, only get an approximate solution. Now, so if you write the pseudocode to the local search algorithm for Trevin Salesman problem, what you would do is to start from a current solution. And how you get a current solution, that is the starting point. It could be random, it could be greedy. Then once you have a current solution, you try to generate the neighborhood. Now, what is a neighborhood if you decide that you want to exchange two edges? then you're going to generate all the possible modifications where you swap two ages. And then you examine each of those from among the possible alternatives, which one is better. And if there is one that is the best, then you replace your solution so the neighbor becomes the current solution. Then from there, you try to modify it again, to improve it again, and so on. 
So uh, if you imagine this to be the solution space, for example, the tour is the little dot there, and then the neighborhood is going to be a small little circle that is outside the dot, which means that these are the ones that are similar enough uh, to the starting solution. Now then, as you find the local search, what it does is that suppose that you start from the beginning, right? Now each time you make a move, you're gonna make a move to another solution that is within the search space. Uh, then at some point you're going to move and each move is going to take you to the new edge, right? And that is going to slowly move along until you find the local optimum. Now we call it local because it just happens to be optimum within the local neighborhood. It doesn't mean that it's a global. The opposite of this is global optimum, which means that it's the best overall. Now if we look at the complexity of doing this, uh, this is going to be O n squared. Now let's break it down in terms of how do we actually get O n squared. So let's assume for the moment that you have an existing tour and the tour has six cities, right? So for example, you may have A, B, C, D, E, F, and let's say, just make it simple for the moment, this is your existing tour. So n cities. Now for n cities, how many edges do you have in the tour? So the tour is going to have a complete round trip, right? So n cities means you're going to have n edges, right? Now then we are going to pair up. That means in order to generate a neighboring solution, we're going to pick two edges which we are going to exchange. So for example, we may decide that we are going to pick this edge and this edge. If that is the case, we are going to remove them and then we need to reconnect them to make it again a complete tour. So then you get a different tour. So that is one neighbor. Because you take two edges, remove them and reconnect them. Now there are many, many possibilities. Right, so just now it was one possibility, but I could pick a different pair of edges. For example, I can still pick this and this. So in that case, I'm going to remove them. Then I'm going to reconnect them in order for me to still get a complete tour. Now in this case, this is another tour. So I need to try every possible pair. Now I have n edges. How many pairs can I generate? Well, the simplest case is that n edges, I need to take two each time. So it's going to be n choose two, right? Now, to be more specific, so I have n edges, each time I'm going to find it a partner to swap. So then, let's say, if I take this one, now which other edge can I pair it up with? Now, there are n edges overall. If I take a particular edge, I cannot pack this up with itself, right? Because then I'm not swapping anything. So in that case, I need to minus one, which is itself. Now, I also cannot pack it up with an adjacent one. So if I take these two, for example, and I remove them, how do I reconnect them and still have a tour? If I connect this, then I cut A out. But if I connect this, then I go back to the original one. There is no change. So which means that for any given age, I cannot take the adjacent one. How many adjacent ages do I have? I have two, because there is one on the left, there is one on the right. So I need two minus another two. And this is for every age. So which means that I need to multiply it by n times. Now, this is when I pick AF, for example, and then I pick another partner, but I could swap the ordering, and I will still get the same pair, which in that case, I need to divide by 2. Right? So what it means is that, if, for example, I pick AB and DE, I could pick AB first, and then DE, or I could pick DE first, and then AB. It's the same two pairs that I'm trying to swap. 
So then the order between the pairs don't matter, so I need to divide by 2. So which means that from here, so we're going to get n times n minus 3 divided by 2. So then the complexity is going to be O n squared. Now, but this is for a single iteration. It's for a single iteration. That means that when we decide that I have an existing solution and I want to generate all the near neighborhoods, then I'm going to get O n squared in terms of the neighborhood. If you're going to do this again and again, in certain number of iterations, uh, then eventually I need to add another. So let's say if you're going to do this for k iterations. So for k iterations, the total complexity is going to be OK and squared. The k is the number of iterations that we're going to do to try to find the two out. Okay, any questions so far about the two opt specifically? So I can't choose two adjacent ones because when I do, I cannot reconnect them and still get a tour. So for example, I have AF and AB, right? If I pick these two, I remove them because they share A, A cannot be swapped. So swapping A, that means that either you swap B and F, in which case I still get the same exact ones as before, or I swap them by bypassing A, in which case A is going to be cut out of the loop. It's not going to be part of the tour. So which means that the only way is not to pick two that are adjacent because it's not going to result in a valid neighbor. So there is also an implementation of 2-opt inside the Python lab. Now, so far we talk about three algorithms, right? So greedy1, greedy2, they are going to construct a full solution. And finally, we have the local search, which you can use to fine tune or to refine a solution by trying to move to a better outcome. Now, uh, these are two strategies which are relatively um, general, meaning that you can apply it to many other problems. Although we've been using traveling salesman problem as an example case, uh, but in effect, uh, the kind of uh, greedy and local search strategies that we are talking about can actually be employed for many other optimization problems. Now, uh, you may also want to explore other optimization algorithms, and essentially we don't cover everything here. So there are different ways to solve a problem. Uh, so for example, this is another alternative, which is called genetic algorithm. And the basic idea of genetic algorithm, well, if you think about the philosophy of the solution, right? So in terms of greedy, what you do with greedy is that you try to construct a solution from nothing, adding one step at a time until you get a full solution. Then you get a local search, which is the idea is that you start from one solution and then you try to modify it until you get to a better solution. Now, in the case of the genetic algorithm, the basic idea is that to do improvement, not by modifying one solution. The improvement is coming from recombining solutions. And the idea is that instead of starting from one solution, you start from a population, which could be a big number, let's say 50 or 100. And then you try to generate new solutions by combining some solutions that you have seen to be good in the past. And so in one iteration, you try to recombine Let's say I have solution one, solution two, let me try to take the first part of solution one, the second part of solution two, and recombine them and see whether I get a better outcome. So that is some idea based on genetic algorithms, which you can use for <coughs> some optimization problems. Uh, there is also another algorithm that is called simulated annealing. This is a different kind of optimization where the idea is to avoid the local optima uh, by jumping 
to some other solutions. That means that uh, a local search can be trapped by the starting point. If you start wrong, then you might actually end up at the wrong place. Uh, the idea of simulated annealing is to try a few different starting points. That means as you keep improving, uh, once in a while, you try to jump to a different starting point to see whether you can improve further upon the previous solution that you have. Uh, there is also some other methods called like uh, linear programming. And the basic idea is that some discrete problems, like what we are trying to do, Trevisan's problem is a discrete problem. It's a discrete problem in the sense that we are trying to determine uh, decisions like whether you pick something or not, whether you put something in the position one or position two, and so on. So you can solve this using integer linear programming. But uh, for problems like this, sometimes there isn't a good solution. So the way they relax it is by making the problem continuous. So instead of a selection or not, then we talk about how many percent do you select it. And then later on, we have some rounding uh, solutions. So there are different ways to approach an optimization problem. We are just barely touching the surface. Uh, because I think the uh, basic idea that we try to get to you is that there are ways to go around problems that are too hard to solve, and one of them being the Sussman problem. So in the tutorial, there are actually other examples of problems that we consider to be intractable. So as you do the tutorial, you're going to realize that the Sussman problem is not the only problem at hand.